it's in how different communities have um, uh, had COVID-19 infections as well. So there's a lot that we can do to understand how our communities are responding and making sure that communities have what they need during the coming weeks and months. And Secretary of State, could I, Emma, could I just um, uh, uh, cite my thanks to the various religious leaders that have worked with uh, Public Health England and with the NHS uh, to uh, handle very sensitive issues uh, in a very um, helpful, proactive way, uh, understanding how very difficult this is for the communities in terms of handling the host, in terms of group gatherings, and then sadly in terms of funerals. and. Um, a, a, a hand, a respectful handling of bodies and we have worked very constructively and for that I am very grateful. Absolutely, thank you. Well thank you Emma for that question and our, our first question from uh, members of the press comes from Patrick Burns from BBC West Midlands. Good afternoon Patrick. Uh, good afternoon Secretary of State and I'm sure you don't need me to remind you that at the beginning of all this the Prime Minister pledged to local authority leaders that they would have a key role, the lead role, in bringing their local communities and vulnerable people through all this. Resources will follow, he said. Well, six weeks on, it's beginning to look as though even the extra help that you've been talking about just now may not actually be enough. If you think of Birmingham City Council alone, the extra costs they've incurred already as a result of this uh, heading north of 260 million pounds and counting and their leader Ian Ward says that really crucial services like adult social care and children's services it's 23 hours in the near future if as he puts it the government doesn't match its words with action well thank you well let, let me be very clear to uh, local council leaders across the country including in the West Midlands we will stand behind them, ensure that they have the resources that they need to carry out the absolutely critical fu functions that they're playing in our national response to coronavirus. That was the promise that I made to local council leaders, as did the Prime Minister, early in the life of uh, the emergency. We've already provided £3.2 billion of additional resources to councils uh, in just the last two months. We've provided almost £4 billion of cash flow to councils precisely so that they shouldn't have to face the difficult choices that you've just described between responding to the virus uh, in their own communities and uh, continuing to do very important uh, public service functions like refuse collection, for example, or looking after vulnerable children uh, in their communities. In the West Midlands, local councils will receive £347 million to deal with the pressures of coronavirus. And that comes on top of a very generous settlement uh, at the beginning of the financial year, which also increased their core spending power by over £300 million. If further resources are required to meet the COVID-related uh, costs that we've asked councils to bear, then obviously we'll uh, take that into consideration in the future. And I've been working very closely with local council leaders and the mayor in the West Midlands, Andy Street, who's been doing a fantastic job at leading the community forward through a very difficult time. I don't know if there's anything further you'd like to, to ask, uh, uh, Patrick, or we'll move on to the next question. I'd just like to really sort of suggest that the key issue here, Secretary of State, is making sure that the extra support gets through to all the authorities who need it. If you take Shropshire as an example, they say the money that they've received doesn't yet cover all the extra costs that they have incurred, and within that area, if you talk to Shrewsbury Town Council, they've been saying on BBC Radio Shropshire that not enough of the money is actually filtering down to the lower tier authorities like them, who, as they point out, are actually closest to the very communities who most need the help. Well, there's two, there's two points there. Firstly, uh, in terms of ensuring that councils get the resources they need, we're absolutely committed to doing that. Uh, councils are receiving more money uh, so far than they have reported to us as, they, as needing to meet the COVID-related uh, costs that they're bearing. They are also, like other organisations across the country, seeing significant reductions in their income because we're not parking in their car parks and using their leisure centres and so on. And that's a particular challenge that we're also focused on, but that's a separate issue. Uh, in the latest £1.6 billion that we provided to councils, we made sure that a significant amount of it did flow to lower tier councils, like district councils, for example, 
And so your average district council in England will now receive, uh, if they haven't done so already in the coming days, a million pounds or more of additional grant uh, to help them with COVID-related expenditure and also to stabilise their finances. And we've asked big parish councils, like the ones you've referred to in Shropshire, uh, like Shrewsbury or Bridge North or Ludlow, uh, to speak with their principal councils who will be receiving uh, that million pounds or more of funding and ensure that it flows down to them if they're also uh, under financial pressure at the moment. And I hope that that will help. Obviously, my department and I are here to, uh, to, uh, to speak with those councils and ensure they get through this with us together. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, I'll come to the second question now, which is from James Vincent from BBC Yorkshire. Good afternoon, James. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Um, on BBC Look North tonight, we've gone, we're have we going to be speaking to Sarah, who's a six-year-old from Tadcaster who needs a, a kidney transplant. Her operation was cancelled when the coronavirus crisis hit. What works the government and the NHS doing to make sure that those people that need vital care, vital operations away from coronavirus are going to get that, uh, they get that as soon as possible? And what's the NHS and the government doing to make sure that any backlog is worked through in the, in the best possible way? Thank you, James. And that's a very important question, which I'm sure is on the mind of many people across the country. Can I perhaps come to Nikki in the first Absolutely. instance? Absolutely. Thank you for your question. And it's something that we're thinking about very actively, as you can imagine. I think it was right that over the last few weeks and months, the NHS made a concerted effort to focus on services that were either urgent for, uh, for an individual or were related to the COVID response. And we absolutely had to do that. So we had to step away from other uh, procedures and routine um, uh, reviews that we might have otherwise done. But now, and um, as, my, as uh, Sir Simon Stevens wrote last week, we've asked the whole system to start to think about how to get back to uh, what we call normal services. And, and, and there will be some things that we want to keep. So during the pandemic, um, actually services have, have revolutionized the way that they've worked, whether that's by using digital technology or developing new ways of caring for patients. Um, but in the case of um, the child that you mentioned, that, that, that child will be prioritised and that uh, operation will be scheduled so that we can get people back on track and that the really important things happen as soon as possible. Very good. Thank you. Do you have a follow-up question, uh, James? Secretary of State, uh, 